Welcome back to a very eerily silent start of Animal Crossing New Horizons. I forgot my game name there. I'm Dear Darling, and shall we see what's going on on our island of Vaughan Hollow today? Now, today's very exciting. You know why today's very exciting? Because it's the first day of July, and you know what that means? Tons and tons of new fish and bugs for us to catch. Well, actually, not that many fish. Mainly a load of bugs. I made a, I made a short list to keep track of things. And like how in June we got a huge amount of new fish to catch, uh, July seems to be a huge amount of new bugs to catch. There seems to be, I don't even know how many that is, there might be like 20 or so. But anyway. Hello for everyone. Right now in Fawn Hollow, it's 3.23pm on Wednesday, July 1st, 2020. Hmm, really isn't any news to speak of today. Oh, did anyone else see that talk show yesterday? I did not, sorry, Isabel. If I could watch the Union Animal Crossing, maybe I would. I'd like to see what sort of shows they have on. But yes. It's the first day of July, of course the wedding event is now over. A recent time, so I hope everyone got everything they wanted from that sort of thing. And we are basically going to try and catch as many fish and bugs as we can today. It's also another raining day. Wasn't it raining yesterday? I can't remember. Uh, there's a green wedding wall here. There's, we have a lot of things which we need to take out and deal with. Um, why don't we throw this away? Throw it away. Forget yesterday. Let's not get copyright claimed. KK Moody. Bank of Nook. How much interest do you think you've got? 4525 bells. That's not a lot. Diana. How are you, Chief? I got worried all of a sudden about whether you were sleeping well. When it comes to looking our best, sleep is terribly important. So, I'm sending you a REM friendly deep sleep prezi. <laughs> deep sleep prezi. Sweet dreams. Diana. Thank you, Diana. No idea what that could be. Something for mum. My dear, dear. Cicadas cry into a morning light, awakening the world with a cacophonous symphony. Your mother cries out as well, lamenting her lack of sleep. Less sleep, more snuggles? Mum. Thank you very much, in-game mum. Uh, let's see what you got us. Um, apparently we didn't do any preparation last night, which is fair. Because I don't think I played last night. <laughs> KK Moody. Uh, well, I shall talk about KK Cider songs in a second. I mask. That makes sense, thank you. Mum plushy? Oh, it's a little like handmade dog. Okay, that's that's beyond adorable. That is that is absurdly adorable. Anyway, the KK Cider song thing. I always used to check if I bought the KK Cider song or not by searching in the Nook's the Nook terminal um, KK and seeing if that song came up. That doesn't work because KK Cider <laughs> the Nook terminal lists songs you can currently buy as well, even if you haven't got them catalogued before. So. Um, I, I made a short list of all the KK songs I'm missing. I'm actually missing a huge amount, so you know, we slowly had to get through all of that. But yeah, I, um, I'm aware of that now, so we should be able to get um, the KK Cider song sorted when we can. Let's put this um, Mum Plushie down somewhere, I don't know, I think we had to take out one of her trophies, probably. We don't need all our trophies, we only need the golden one, let's be honest. The other stuff can go away. Um, I guess we'll... Where's our inventory? Here it is. We'll put it here, you know, in this corner. Adorable. Simply adorable. And let's leave. Um, what other things? Ah, uh, I feel like there's something else I was meant to say. Not that I can remember. But anyway, we have a lot of fish and bugs that we might need to catch. It's of course raining, so I don't know if this affects bug appearance rates. It definitely will affect some the rarer fish's appearance rates and make them appear more often, which is good. Like... Well, I'll tell you what fish is new. The new fish are a sweet fish you can find in a river all day, a puffer fish you can find in the sea all day, Napoleon fish and ocean sunfish which you can find in the sea from 4 to 9 p.m. From 4 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, they're both large fish and the ocean sunfish has a fin like a shark would. So they're very um, noticeable, presumably. Uh, we should probably buy a customization kit and customize the shovel. It's probably going to break at some point. Uh, let's also get some... Oh! There's our first new insect. Sorry. Flow. One of these. Let's go catch that one, then. They're very skittery, then. But there we go, we should catch one. Was this a robust one? Yes! I caught a brown cicada, that makes sense. It is brown. So let's cross that off the list. Um, yeah, there's a huge amount of insects, which I'll get into in a second. In fact, I'll get into it right now. This is how many. Are you ready? These are all the new ones. There are. The earth, the earth boring dun beetle, the grasshopper, the cicada shell, the saw stag, Miami stag, evening cicada, 
Walking Stick, Robust Cicada, Brown Cicada, Giant Cicada, Horn Dynasty, Giant Stag, Scarab Beetle, Walking Leaf, Blue Weevil Beetle, Cyclometer Stag, Giraffe Stag, Golden Stag, Horned Atlas, Horned Elephant, Horned Hercules. My word, that's a lot of bugs that we need to catch in this month of July. Um, obviously we don't have to catch them all in July, but a lot of these, the new ones which come out in July, um, you need to catch them, is this the same? I think that's the same one. I'll catch it again just to be sure, but... Uh, a lot of these July insects are only around for July and August, so you only have a very limited amount of time to catch them, is a problem. Now these cicadas are of course extremely common, so I'm not going to be too worried about not seeing them, but some of them, like, there's a huge amount of these stags, like these, um, these rare beetles which you find on coconuts and stuff, coconut trees, sorry. And they are, uh, there's a lot of them. So it might take a while to catch them all, <laughs> I'll be perfectly honest. Uh, is that? That fish doesn't look quite big enough, I don't think. I'm uncertain though, so I'll catch it anyway. So this, today's episode, I'm probably not going to do much flower arranging. I'm going to try and catch as many fish and bugs as we can before 30 minutes is up, and we'll donate them all off to the museum. Because, you know, that's kind of what we're doing. That's, that's not even a fish, to be honest, that's a tyre. We'll look around for our fossils as well, but I won't be moving many flowers, I think. That's what I've decided, just on the fly. So yeah, we'll slowly, slowly throughout July and August catch a lot of them. There's actually also two insects, the giant stag and the scarab beetle, which you can only catch from 11pm to 8am, which is pretty absurd. Um, it's not too often I play at those times, so it's going to be a little bit awkward. But we'll figure something out, I'm sure. I mean, I don't think those are particularly rare. I don't remember though. My, in my mind all the beetles are rare so it's kind of hard to judge. Oh I was meant to buy some customization kits I forgot. And then when we pass Roscoe's house we'll customize these. So yeah we got a work out for us if we were to be a ichthyologist. Is ichthyologist insects? I think it is. I hope I didn't make it up and got it wrong. <laughs> it, wait is it? You know I'm, I'm just gonna presume it is to be honest. But yeah, what have I been up to? Uh, not much. I did a bit of pro programming on it. In fact, I'm still doing some programming. I got a bit stuck though, so I was like, whatever, I'll just record Animal Crossing right now. I'll, I'll come back to it, you know? Sometimes, if you've got puzzles and problems to solve, you just need a little bit of time away from it. And then, when you look back into it, maybe it'll come work with a solution. This one really isn't though, like a problem, like I'm stuck in a thing. This is because I'm learning for a course. Automate the boring stuff, it's a very popular one. Automate the boring stuff with Python, you probably know about it. And currently, um, what we're doing is web, web scraping. So if you don't know what that is, it's basically taking information from websites using a program, like an automated way of doing it, rather than, you know, like manually searching websites. So is that a grasshopper? I think that's a long locust, but I'm also not sure. Grasshoppers can be found on the ground from eight to five, so it could be. It's hard to tell. Uh, let's see if all these around here any new fish. So yeah, um, it's not like a problem like I'm stuck with it, it's more like a problem because the course, the video for the course on Udemy is a little bit old. Oh, all these thinking about something over here. Ah, right next to a, a stag beetle or something. Do you believe trees can like tell the future? I had a dream and in it you had a brown cicada. I was all, what? And you were like, hey, I heard you were looking for this. And I was all, whoa. And here you are. And like, oh my gosh, are you serious to me right now? You have it, just like in my dream. Can I, um, I need a brown cicada. Do you maybe think you could sell me yours? I'll sell it because brown cicadas are so common, we'll catch another one. Not serious? Okay then, let's be serious. How does 325 bells sound? Sounds like a deal. I'm just glad you didn't want a rara, a rara insect. For real? Oh my um, gosh, you are so amazing. Oh, there's a new cicada over there as well. Can you see it? <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much, Chief. You just made this the best day ever. All right, let's try and catch this beetle. Huh. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> Is this a robust cicada? I'm very bad at judging how far away I need to be for bees. I caught a robust cicada. There we go. Okay, just keep your eyes out peeled for another brown cicada because that's one we need to catch. Um, Audi, let's give you a present as well before I forget. Um, 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 um. 
yeah, so, um, automate boring stuff. So the video is, um, decently old, and basically it's on the part of a, a video where it's, uh, scraping information from an Amazon website. Now, I guess since then Amazon's put in some measures in place because to protect itself against, um, bots spamming itself with requests and, you know, DDoS attacks, I assume I'm not too knowledgeable in, um, website internet security. I, d I don't even know what umbrella that would go under. So that means, um, firstly, that you kind of had to trick Amazon when you send a request and pretend that you're not a, a program doing it. You pretend that you're searching for the information through uh, a web browser. Uh, another problem that's come up though is the one I'm trying to act actively work on is we're using a module, which is I suppose like a extension pack, expansion pack. I guess you could call it for Python if you're not aware of programming to um, say let's like pass the information that we download from the Amazon website and basically sift through all information and find what we want, which in this case is the prices. But I can't seem to get it to work properly. And I think it's because Chrome's changed a little bit of a functionality when you um, look at the code, basically. Look at the, the website code behind the scenes and pick out information from it. I think it's changed it slightly. So I need to basically look into that a little bit more and try and figure out what's going on there. This is a very sharp angle, so I'm not sure if we can... We can, apparently, because I am amazing. This is a uh, Miami stag. Oh, they're much darker than they were in the previous versions. I remember they were, like, straight up brown. Um, In New Leaf, at least. At least I think they were. I don't know. They've introduced a lot of different bugs as well. Um, A lot of... Not bugs. Y you know what I mean, like, insects. Insect bugs in New Horizons. A lot of these are new. I don't remember there being so many cicadas in New Leaf, but I also might have just forgotten, to be perfectly honest. Um, was that a grasshopper? I saw something bounce over here. Is this a grasshopper? No, it's a long locust. I also feel like I saw a walking leaf here for a second. <laughs> walking leaves you don't know, they're disguised as regular furniture leaves. Just under trees. But then you have to swipe at them to catch them. I, I saw like a weird white puff. So I assume that must have been the walking leaf, which I missed. But, you know, it happens. Let's give Roscoe some fruit while we're over here. <laughs> Roscoe's eyes turning yellow is perhaps one of the most frightening things, but it's also amazing. So we still need to get five more fruits, that's fine. So yeah, programming. You often run into bugs and... not bugs and stuff, but difficulties while programming. And you have to sort them out yourself. Or use Stack Exchange, as the case may be. <laughs> In most cases, no. Let me take a sip of water. And problem something solving is something I'm good at. It's just, I haven't spent a lot of time on this problem yet, so I haven't really gotten around to it. It was just, it was something like, I literally ran into about like, five to ten minutes just before I started recording this episode, and I was like, hmm. Uh, what size is a sweet fish? Size three, so that's probably not a sweet fish. It's like, hmm, I don't really know what to do about this. I'll think about it later, I guess. Hello, Savannah. I'll think about it later after this ep episode. I've done re after I've done recording stuff. I actually need to start recording new series today because uh, Bug Fables, I've finished recording a while back and A Short Hike has now also come to an end. I finished recording that yesterday. So, but if you don't know, the two um, games which are going to replace them, uh, the first one is going to be Rakuen which is going to be replacing A Short Hike, so that's going to be every other day. And then the one replacing Bug Fables, uh... Is this a different... this might be a source tag. <laughs> okay, that was just terrible angling at my part, to be perfectly honest. We also didn't customise our tools, I, I realise. Uh, that's a jewel beetle, we don't need that. I'm just looking around for some fruits to harvest. I guess we can... is that a grasshopper? That might be a grasshopper. No, it's a long locust. I should really look like... look and see what a grasshopper looks like. But we'll release you. And we'll harvest these fruits instead. Or only some of them, I suppose. Um, I know I'm wasting most of them, but I also can't be bothered to get rid of the flowers, which are in my way. Ah, we need one more. We also need to visit Fuchsia's house. Okay, we've got, <laughs> got bits and pieces to be doing, which I'm not doing. 
Let's clear our inventory. I guess we could put this purple pansy down. I don't know why I dug it up, to be honest, but I did. Let's put this stuff over here. Um, yeah, so new series, Requiem, um, from a creator of the person who did the music for Plants vs Zombies, which, by the way, is fantastic and one of my favourite childhood games. I've got, like, over 60 hours in that game, which is amusing, considering the campaign's only, like, a few hours long, I think. But I love that game. I played through it multiple times. Maybe I'll play through it again at some point. Kind of sad what we did with Plants vs Zombies 2. It's a mobile game. I played it a decent amount. I lost all my progress, though, because of... It was on an old phone. And it was also very annoying, kind of... It's not pay to win, because you can win without it, but you had to spend power-ups, basically, to beat some of the levels. Including the dreadful beach world. If you've ever played Plants vs Zombies 2, you'll know what I'm talking about. The beach world was absolutely horrendously difficult. At least I thought it was horrendously difficult, and I was like, I hate this. You had to use power-ups, basically, to beat each level. And I was like, I don't want to do that anymore. The Medieval Ages was also a pretty tough tough world. It wasn't nearly as bad as this, um, the Summer Beach world or whatever. I don't even know what it's called. But yeah, I, I, I was stubborn, so I was like going through the mindset and I was like, I'm going to beat this game without using any of these power-ups. I'm just... That could be a puffer fish. I think that's the right size. We'll see. Uh, so I'm going to play through this entire game without using any of the power-ups and it went pretty well. There were some difficult levels, of course, and then I got to a beach world and I was like... I tried, I can't remember, I think it was like the halfway point level, somewhere like that, and I was just like, this is so insanely difficult, like I tried it, it must have been nearing a hundred times, because I always played it like, um, before we took roll call, basically registration, in the morning, uh, back in, back in high school, and it was so difficult. I tried so long to beat it, and I was like, alright, I'm giving up, I'm no longer having fun, I'm just gonna use power-ups to get through, and I was like, oh, feels kind of lame, but whatever. And then I had to do it for, like, three more levels throughout that world, because it was, I don't know, I, maybe I'm just super bad, but I found it really difficult. <laughs> the Medieval Ages wasn't as bad, I don't remember the Medieval Ages world all that well. What was the gimmick in that one? It had, like, potions on the floor that made zombies different, mm, that was a size 2 fish, it turns out. Makes sense. That made uh, zombies have different powers or something as you went through. Sounds about right to me. We need to scare off these bugs because only a limited amount of bugs can spawn at any one point. Or is that a brown cicada? That could be a brown cicada. What you do is when you get to like this far away, boom. Swipe. It is raining. Oh, it's a giant cicada. Guess it doesn't feel like singing in the rain. I guess that's true. I didn't know it had a sp particular thing. Are they speaking with each other? No, nope, there's... Oh, they are. Hello, oh, Vivian. You're always so calm and composed. I wish I could be like that. I don't understand. How do you do it? Why, thank you, sweetie. That's so kind of you to say. You see, I believe that no matter what comes my way, I must maintain a facade of graceful composure. Oh, I see. It's just, I get flustered so easily. What do you do when something unexpected happens? How do you not get totally discombobulated? Discombobulate. Well, first I take a deep breath, then I remind myself that I'm unattractive when agitated. But mostly I just hold my head high no matter what. Oh, and I have this thing I like to say. You may have heard me say it. Sweetie, sweetie, sweetie. It's just a little saying that helps me keep centered during even most distressing of times. I don't know. I guess I can try taking a deep breath and doing those other things, but it still seems difficult. I wonder, would you mind if I started saying sweetie like you do? Maybe saying it will help me keep centred too, sweetie. Oh, you're going to stop saying sunny, Silvana? I don't see why not. If you really want to say sweetie, be my guest. You know me. I'm happy to help in any way I can, sweetie. Sweetie, 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 sweetie. Oh, Vivian, thank you. I think it's working. I'm feeling more composed already, sweetie. Oh, that's a, one of those rare conversations about, um, taking catchphrase from another person. Is that size 3? That's size 2, surely. That's another giant cicada. This is a different cicada. I don't know what this is. A robust cicada? I was wrong. But we might as well catch these. Just for now. 
Shouldn't have released that brown cicada. <laughs> Just like I did when... Uh, because Audio ended up asking for one. Oh, oh yeah, we should scare these away, I forgot. Scare them away if you don't want them. Uh, do we, we haven't given something to Fuchsia yet. It's been 20 minutes and I haven't made it halfway around my island yet. <laughs> That's how slow I am. Yeah, plants and zombies. Is that, is that what I'm talking about? I feel like I had like 50 million hanging branch, hanging conversations, which I didn't finish off. Um, <laughs> I don't even know what to talk about anymore. Plants and zombies, yeah, plants and zombies too. I feel like I've spoken about this before, but I can't remember exactly. I'm trying to think what other worlds were. Because I, I I stopped roughly around when it came to like the modern age where they had them. Um, I can't remember what plant, the plants. One of them was like called Fat Beet or something. It was a literal beet, like a beetroot beet. And it did like pulsating AoE damage. Um, that looks like a long locust. Let's see what we've got over here. Sorry about that, little jump cut. Let's carry on. I don't remember what I was talking about anymore. I was talking about plants and zombies, wasn't I? <laughs> plants and zombies too. Oh yeah, the other worlds. What other worlds were there? Somehow I only got one pair from this. So, success, I guess. Used up all our wrapping paper as required. Um, What other worlds were there? Yeah, I stopped in the, the modern age with the fat beats. And I don't remember any other plants from that era. It's definitely something though. I know. Uh, we already gave something to Rowan, right? He was in Nooks, I believe. Um, let's see, any other insects? I looked up what a grasshopper looks like as well. In that little pause, just to see. Get out of it, snail, we don't want you. We want new insects only. Clap, clap, clap. Um, yeah, the modern era one was interesting, wasn't it? That, that one had, like, a zombie which put down, like, an arcade cabinet and it spawned, like, 8-bit zombies, right? Or did I just make it up? Hmm. I can't remember any of the other worlds. The first, the first world is a normal world, and the second world was an ice world, right? There's a dinosaur world in there somewhere. <laughs> but that's a dinosaur one was interesting. I thought the, the plants you got was really interesting. One of them, like, had different forms depending on where you placed it. Like, if you put it near the back, it would be, like, full DPS. If you put it in the middle, it would be, like, half DPS, somewhat tanky. And if you put it at the front, it would be, like, full-on tanky. But it was not nearly... It didn't have nearly as much DPS as the other DPS plant, and it didn't have as nearly as much, um... defensiveness as the other... That fish doesn't look like the right size. As the other defensive plant. So I was like, oh, that's interesting, a versatility plant. There's also another plant which like lobbed something, which like bounced, like on consecutive zombies or something like that. <gasps> Ooh, that's fine. That wasn't a rare one. That was one we've already got. Apparently, brown cicadas don't exist anymore, as um what I found out. Let's carefully pick up that weed, as it seems to be uh nigh impossible to find one. We got any fish in here? We want? Not really. It's also stopped raining, raining now in real life. That was like a, a, a flash, a flash, flash of rain. Is that a brown cicada? That, that's a brown cicada right there. My wish has been answered. That's not a brown cicada. That is a giant cicada. I don't know my cicadas. How many of? Hmm. Okay, we don't need all these giant cicadas, I suppose. I suppose we should actually. That's a. Robust one or whatever, isn't it? Increase our inventory space. I forgot to put the purple flower down by the, the purple area, but whatever. More blues for the blue flowers. Who have we not given a present to? Flo, I feel, is definitely one of them. Not sure who the other is. Who have we not seen? Well, Flo's here. Hello, Flo. Yeah, plants will be a good game. How do I even get onto this? Oh, Raccoon. Yeah, Raccoon was um the next game I'm playing, which will be going every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 6 p.m. GMT. 
That's, um, I'm looking forward to it. It's very, I think it's a very touching story based game. And I've heard a lot about it, so hopefully it's very exciting. And uh, replacing every day will be Snakebird Primer, and then following beating Snakebird Primer, which I hear is not too long, it's going to be Snakebird. A very intensive and difficult puzzle game from what I heard. Snakebird Primer is just like the warm up to it, you know. Because Snakebird I heard is very difficult, so they made Snakebird Primer to sort of like introduce people to the concept and, you know, not overwhelm them. How we only found... Oh. I was going to say, how we only found two fossils? I guess we didn't check the campground, it could be there. I just want to find a brown cicada before we start donating stuff. Um, that looks like a giant cicada to me. It's kind of hard to tell. All the cicadas look very similar. As indeed a giant cicada. Are there even other any... <laughs> what? Are there even any other cicadas we need to catch? And it doesn't look like it. Well, that we can currently catch is a evening cicada and there's a cicada shell, I suppose. I also don't have a lot of space under our leaf trees, so maybe we'll like never find a walking leaf. Is this a brown cicada? That looks like another giant cicada to me. I just want, I just want another brown cicada so we can donate it. You know, I've crossed it off my list. I don't want to put it back. You might ask, dear, have you not learned your lesson about selling these cicada? Oh, that's a brown cicada, isn't it? I don't like this angle. Hold on, hold on. Restep, 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 restep. <gasps> ah, this was silly Joy-Con drift. <laughs> Putting my camera upwards. It's so hard to tell the angle. Of course, I'm just blaming randomly my Joy-Cons rather than myself. If you don't admit to your fault, <laughs> now that's that's obviously not how you should do things. It, it was very clearly my fault. I should have. I, I know better, basically, and that I should be an expert Animal Crossing insect catcher. Uh, that is a... Was it? Hold on, what, what What can we find on coconut trees now? A blue weevil beetle. Maybe a saw stag. I don't know what a saw stag looks like, but it's a problem. I'm just trying to find a new... For one, that one fossil we're missing, and also... Just a, just a simple brown cicada. That's all I require. See, a lot of these insects you can only find in July and August, so if we don't find them now, we've only got August. But you know, I'm not really worried. If we if we play a little bit every day, so we get catch them all quite quickly. Oh, here's the other fossils right here. Diana, why didn't you tell me? I could have found it ages ago. Well, I guess we'll just donate this stuff anyway. I don't think we'll find a, be able to find a brown cicada. Well, I mean, I found one, but, you know, I, like, scared it away at every opportunity, so. <laughs> it's so hard to tell the insects apart now. There's so many similar-looking insects. But whatever. We'll do our usual business of donating stuff to Blavis, and I'll make sure to catch one off-camera to donate, hopefully. At some point. Or maybe we'll do it on-camera, I don't know. Everything's up in the air. How do we do anything anymore? I don't know. Who have we not given a present to? I don't, oh, Axel. It was Axel, of course. So let's make a donation. What well, we got to donate? Quite a few things, I think. Let's start with a giant cicada, why don't we? Of course, I'd love to hear a little bit more blabbers. The giant cicada is rather aptly named. That is, it's truly an enormous bug. Ugh. These beasts spend most of their lives underground where they gorge out on tree roots. But once they emerge, they make an awful racket. In fact, some say this song sounds like a shrieking siren. I would rather not listen to nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> or I'd rather listen to nails on a chalkboard. I was like, that doesn't make sense, Blavers. You would rather not listen to nails on a chalkboard? I think most people would rather not listen to nails on a chalkboard if given the opportunity. Please tell me a little bit more. The robust cicada got its name from a chirping sound it makes, which is said to be quite, well, robust. But robust hardly describes it. Abrasive, bombastic, cacophonous, that's more like it. Besides a horrid caterwauling, this bug is known for its long wing, short body, and green colouring. But look at, looking at a robust cicada is just as unpleasant as listening to one. My eyes and my ears are offended. Blavis, you're saying words I don't understand. What the heck was... What was it, caco wheeling? I don't even remember what you said now. And the Miami stack, we only caught three things. That's not a lot. We got a lot more to catch, but still. 
Uh, most of them come after 5 p.m. So, <laughs> please tell me more. The Miami stack has protrusions on its head that resemble ears, and yet the ugly lumps are not ears. It is, however, called a stag beetle because of the large deer-like horns upon its dead head. And the word Miami in its name means deep mountain in Japanese. Oh, it does, yeah. I didn't even really think about it. Feel free to call it what you like. I will simply call it disgusting. Disgusting stag beetle does have a ring. Oh, blabbers. But anyway, I think we'll round up this episode here. Um, I think these early days of July is just going to be catching a load of new fish and bugs until we get the new expansion stuff coming out. So if you have been watching, thank you very much. This has been Animal Crossing New Horizons. <laughs> Sorry, weird boys again. If you have been watching, thank you very much. This has been Animal Crossing New Horizons, and I've been Dear Darling. Any likes, comments, and subscriptions are greatly appreciated, and I hope we can see each other again. But for now, it's our farewell. So until next time, bye-bye for now. What a weird ending to that episode, huh?